Thank you. And well, the first thing we are go we're gonna, we, mm, I have to say is that we are going to present the results, a very brief summary of the results of uh, a series of seminars we have been hosting at the UOC in 1980, in 2008, 2009, and 2010. And mainly, we are going to talk about the, the, the second one, the, the one we, we held last year in November. And well, the reason to present that here is that uh, that seminars we, we have been, uh, have been um, proposed to uh, think, to, to uh, well, it's, it's like a think tank. We have gathered about uh, thir some 30, 30 to 40 people from uh, all around the world, just, and we have put them a question to be answered in, 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 during the seminar, with, or to, in, and also not only to, to give answers to the question, but also to, to provide action plans for those uh, answers. Uh, provided that uh, we, we look for a next scenario in which uh, open contents and open technologies are the are, are the, the used no, not what we we'll go with uh, or, or what, how to do to adopt op, open technology and open contents but we have we already had that scenario and then which will be the landscape in which the the university higher education essentially will uh, go on so the first question in the first seminar was in 2008 is uh, what does it mean to be educated in the 21st century? That's a really a very, a, a very big and complicated question. The second one was provided that we have at, uh, attached the goals, we have uh, attained the goals that we, or the definitions uh, that we, we have uh, uh, formulated in the, in the first seminar, what will we go on, <laughs> how to do that? And the third one which was held just a few weeks ago in, at the beginning of October, and we already we don't we, we don't not yet the, the the proceedings. Let's say it um, uh, about campus life. Campus life. What the, for, for was exactly the how to uh, um, provide engagement mainly in the in the digital um, university scenario. Uh, by the way, you may get uh, the publication that contains the results of the first seminar on the net. The second one is we have several examples here, and we also have left some in the upstairs, close to the, to the place where we were going to have lunch, and the third one will appear shortly. <laughs> okay. So that, that are more or less, I'm, I'm not going to read the... <laughs> The, the points of the of the slide, but you know that's it was the 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 the, answer, the conclusions we got in, after that uh, one and a half uh, work in in the first seminar, no. <coughs> and <coughs> obviously there are some <coughs> excuse me there are some questions that are quite obvious, and we think that there are some other which are not that obvious. So just, we, you know, we were really very, we, are really, we were really happy with the, with the outcome of the seminar, even with the seminar itself, because, you know, it was a, a dynamic of work. It was really very, 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 we enjoyed that. And I mean that all participants in the seminars enjoyed that, that the kind of work with the, you know, the, 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 the dynamics of the, of, of the seminar. By the way, Last year or, or last seminar, they, one of the sessions we worked with where we were doing a paella for that we always, uh, after we, we eat, ate it, no? So, but you know, it's not only the paella. We, we are, the conclusions do not include what was the, 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 the paella, the taste of the paella, but they, they include the, the things that we talk during the, the making of the, of the paella, no? And, 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 well, it was a complete menu, no? Uh, and the question uh, for, the, for that seminar, that uh, the second one, how uh, was that one, which is, I mean, key to, the, to a seminar, to a, a meeting or a conference like that, no? 
So the main conclusion, well, the main conclusion, it was not the main conclusion, but the main point is that we do already know <laughs> before the seminar and always that, that, uh, that um, assessment by, the assessment by, by Niels Bohr that prediction is really very difficult, especially if they are about, they are about future. And obviously, I mean, in 2009, we were not that much aware of the financial and economical crisis that just explode just very shortly after the, the seminar. But nevertheless, I mean, the, the conclusion that it was the people in that seminar uh, was it was four to five people from, from, from the UOC and the, and the rest are people from all around the world. <coughs> and and, uh, and uh, I mean that although we were not aware of the financial and the crisis and the other stuff, we, 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 we do think that still the, um, the conclusions are valuable and if just because of the crisis, perhaps it's even more valuable than uh, before that, no? So um, that's more or less the landscape, the, the, the landscape we were drawing during the, the first part of the seminar and the conclusions and was had the form of a call to action. So uh, as you may see, there are at least three main points that are related to open content and open technology. The first one is the, the, use, the reuse and remixing of rich media, media the, the, to enable the culture of sharing, and, the, and not to forget that um, open resources is not about only about open content, but is also about the, the contest <coughs> and the tools that enable their use and understanding. It's really very, so uh, I just mentioned that I received an email during the preparation of that conference that with a, an attached doc was a, a, a Word document. <laughs> and you know, and I said, just joking, but not that much. <laughs> that meant was, is that a real true open ed conference or what is, no? <laughs> so, as, and for instance, we were joking just a little bit, just before the presentation that we have come here with a PowerPoint presentation that is not really very, very, very open. But Nevertheless, I said, you know, this is, you can manage it through uh, office and open office, and it's a problem. But <laughs> okay, and and then that's at least what the, the the feeling and about the feelings of the seminar and the feelings about the that landscape we are trying to 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 figure out. Um, perhaps it's the best the best way is that, that phrase by by Alan Kay that said that, you know, that it was, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a meeting where things were going hard because of the, the bosses were not really very, truly convinced of what they, they was doing. And they, and, and in fact, the bosses were seeing the, the, the future as a, you know, as a Pandora bot. And, and the, the answer by Alan K was that the, the worst way is just to, to, is to predict the futuristic invent it and really, he, Alan Kay, invented the future. For instance, the tablet PCs that now, yeah, that will, will be in few weeks, the, 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 the economical and the, 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 the explosion of the market was, the, uh, the first one was imagined and built by, by him in 1969. Okay, about the feeling of the seminars and the continuation of that seminars uh, is the part that Eva should talk about and I, I think that I have less, uh, had enough time to do that. Well, I'm thinking that maybe if I speak about something passionate, I should stand up, but uh, I'll, tr I'll try sitting down here. Um, first of all, um, the meeting, um, we have the publications that you're all, I mean, can access online, and we brought some, some here for you. And it's a work of a lot of people. And uh, what we have presented here, what Lorenz has presented, it's just a glimpse and some conclusions, but there's a lot of more detail and added value in the publication. So I encourage you to to access it and read it and um, and, and comment on it. Um, yes, in the website, which is openedtech.org, if you want to be interested, you can sign up and um, we're trying to think about next steps. So um, we wanted to tell you a little bit about our soul and what's the idea behind Open Ed Tech um, 
summit or meetings or workshops and um, and and what do what we believe in and and uh, we keep it as a vision and we would love to share with you we want to focus on the why um, so often we're focusing on the on the tools themselves on the environments and the openness and the technical and the standards but very little do, do we hear about why 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 do people want to learn? Are, are we really empowering them? You know, we're providing solutions for the learning, but are we really giving them a reason why they want to learn about something? This, of course, is a photograph of the environment. You know, they need a purpose of life, and we think that we should contribute to that before we can start thinking about solutions for learning. So we want to focus on the why and, um, and, and really help develop, you know, and, 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 and build leaders, you know, more than business people or solutions. So we believe in leadership in changing the world. Another thing that drives us is that we think that we should start believing in it, believing that this is a revolution and that we can change it. Somehow, I mean, in many of our discussions, we feel like when we talk about educational technology, it's like an option, like a backup, like an alternative to. And, you know, the way we summarize it is that we want people to say, oh my God, they didn't have that when I grew up, when I studied. You know, I mean, I wish I had that. It's about added value. It's about a change, you know. I mean, we think that, that it can be a radical change in the way we learn and in the way we are as a community. And, um, and, and also many times we speak from, from the from the week, you know, we don't have funds and this. I mean, we should believe that, that this is going to be a better option. And, um, and, and here we have you know, all of the participants. I mean, I, I am speaking to many of you, and I don't feel that power. And I, I think, you know, I mean, we would like through Open Ed Tech and through everything that we do at WALK, you know, to sort of empower that. Let's start it, the work. It's going to start with ourselves and believing that we can make a change in the revolution. Not just little steps. Not oh, maybe I can get that grant and do that. No, no. Let's do it with grant, without grant. I mean, let's just believe in it and participate in it. So we can change the world, and we want it open. We want it global. We want it accessible, and collaborative, etc., etc., etc. And then we want to do something. You know, it's about doing it. So let's talk in more action. Um, this um, open ed tech, um, we're also thinking about how can we, you know, we have all these discussions and they're great and they generate great action plans, but we also try to identify the people that are actually doing things. We want to grow that community. We want to grow the community of people who, who does things, who's doing things, who are leading the change. And not only that, I mean, and let's put together the environment that needs to it. So we also want to sort of um, introduce a line of pilots, you know, or something that we can not only discuss about it and try to um, not to evangelize or empower, but uh, but to also let's do it. You know, I mean, let's not sit around saying, "Oh, if we did that, let's let's do it," you know, and let's let's lead the change. And this is mainly our our presentation. And um, we invite you to dance with us. You know, let's do it together. So please, you can access openedtech.org and sign up if you're interested. We are thinking about the next steps and how we can work more collaboratively together in leading it and leading the change. And together, we can amount the resources. We can be much more powerful and really lead the change. Thank you very much. I'm not sure. Maybe did we go too fast, Brian? <laughs> Does any of you have any questions? Any thoughts? Okay, I'll ask a question. What drives you? What's your primary motivating factor? If it's oh, sorry. What drives you? <laughs> <laughs> What's your primary motivating factor? Is it ego? Is it money? Is it uh, fulfillment in life? Where's the dance card? Yeah. Definitely fulfillment. My personal is fulfillment in life. I live my life very fully. I don't like to waste a second of my life. And I think I have a, um, I mean, I have a need to participate in the evolution, you know, of this world and in community. And um, no, I, 
I, I believe in, in contributing, in helping, and not only locally, but uh, globally. And uh, I do, you know, I do not, um, yeah, I don't think I'm driven by, by, by anything else than passion, just passion for change and, and for improvement. Yeah, well, but I don't know if Lorenzo. No, I, I, I do agree. Well, we have a, a, we have a task to do. That we, we are running a, a university, uh, is a full online university with 54,000 students. So, and we have to do many things, and, 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 and we do that. But also, we like to think about what we are doing, and how will be it in the next future. That kind, of, that task we are doing. So we, we don't want it to be driven by, by, by the day-to-day, the -day, only by the day-to-day, -day, by day by day, the, the, the task we have to do. We do that, but we also, we, we, we have to think how it will be the future and to be prepared for, to imagine that future, but not to be, you know, uh, surrounded by them, by, by it. That's, that's the main, the main topic. It's, it's a part, it's a passion, but it's also, it's a part of our task, of everyday task. All right. Well, uh, the first thing I have to tell you that the, the, our president uh, attended to the to the closing session, and she said, "You know, I don't like any of you because you are too all of them. You are very old. I I would like to 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 to, to see here young people because they are they will be the users of tomorrow. <coughs> and this is one well, we were trying just to get that, but we did not succeed because we were just not thinking from the from the side of 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 of, of uh, educators, but also from the side of user designers. You know that's that's. Yeah. Well, we're always trying different <coughs> formulas, and this is what we also hope to do. I mean, w we don't mind taking risks. So we call them fresh thinkings. We like to mix different profiles of people and see if we put them in a cocktail, if that's going to be good or not. And we do take risks. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This year, for example, we invited artists um, as we wanted them to bring them. This year's was um, titled Campus Life, and we wanted to bring engagement. And who knows about engagement? Musicians, painters, artists. So we wanted to have their input and, and their ideas and their open minds. And um, the funny thing is that even though there were seven of them, they were not enough. So we're thinking that um, different uh, workshops, you know, need to be done in which there, there's a heavier uh, representation of these artistic um, or a more creative profile. And young people. <laughs> but there's um, first thinking. Sometimes we have mixed different profiles. You can bring uh, mixed young, young uh, younger people, students, you know, just children. I mean, we, we want to explore as many formulas as possible in order to understand where we're going to, what it's needed. And, um, and we hope, you know, as, a, as an institution to, to really um, take part, you know, talking about vision, you know, we want to participate in, in the future of learning, whatever that is, an institution or not. I mean, we, we really want to open a tech allows us to be sort of institution free in the sense of we want to dream about the ideal, and we want to talk about it and do it together with the community that is willing to collaborate. Let's go ahead, Simon. The what? Sorry, I didn't hear the. Um, you, you had the word leadership up there, um, and when you look at what people are saying we need from leaders in society and from business right now. You can almost swap the word leader or you know, senior manager out and put in pupil or student because it's all about navigating and making sense of complexity that feels overwhelming. And so you may want to look at people who are at the forefront of leadership development if you're not already, I expect you are because there's very similar discourses going on there around the future of learning and the future of leadership. Um, just a small clarification of what we think um, about leadership. We actually um, have this um, definition that we see leadership as someone who's driven 
by, by something else than ego. Okay, that could be a student, that could be anyone, anyone who th has the reasons for doing something is not but to shine or get something for themselves only for that. So it's a very broad, and this was a discussion with a Harvard PhD business person about the difference between business person and a leader. And um, uh, that's sort of where, where we're standing on that. For those who have not been able to get a copy of that report, I just re remind you that they, um, they are more upstairs. They're, they're enough for everyone, I mean, okay? Thank you.